Hello, Betsy and Stacy here. We're going to do a little deeper dive into uh, some uh, diets. You know, a lot of people oh, always have questions about intermittent fasting. It's very popular. Keto, I'd say those are the two most common these days, other than like the Ozempic world, which is a different topic, which we will definitely talk more about another time. But we're going to kind of focus in on those two. And I think the big question is like, we get this question a lot. It's just like, well, what? kind of diet should I be doing to optimize or to heal my metabolism and to make my life easier and to lose weight. And, and so Stacey and I are going to kind of get into that more today. So uh, I always just want to connect with all of you and just let us know in the comments, whether it's now or later, whether, you know, you have tried intermittent fasting or keto and you can just say IF or keto you know, maybe tell us about your experience a bit, um, or at least just write those kinds of things in there. We just want to know who we're talking to. And obviously, let us know if you have any questions about the topics that we talk about. So I Stace, we, I we do get somebody, a lot of those. Uh -huh. what, I spoke to somebody the other day that's doing or tried for not very long, the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. have you heard of this? Yes. this is like a new thing. This oh, is, explain it just a tad. It's like all meat. Yeah, I figured uh -huh. like nothing else, like just like nothing. Yeah, there's so many extremes out there. Wow. <laughs> that's a lot. Of and that's I just I might feel like an animal if I was just eating all meat. And like, rawr, rawr. Yeah, like a tiger. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And keto can go in that direction as yeah. well, where it's got a lot of meat in there. Mm -hmm. So I, it's not that anything is like just good, bad. There's just, I, I think it's more about understanding how these diets affect your body and truly how they affect your metabolism, because that's, what's going to set you up for success or failure down the road. So mm -hmm. it's less about good, bad, yes, no, and more about let's understand it more. So, um, like I had a client uh, or a, a person I was talking to today is thinking about joining our program who's just kind of obsessed about the uh, intermittent fasting world. So she does it. She's done it for a while. And then she also is just like, well, if I don't do it for a while, like it's still good. Right, Betsy? Like I could still do it every once in a while. Like it's just so many questions and she's just so stuck on it. Why? Because our society has so much information on how intermittent fasting is really good for our body. So let's chat about that for a sec, because I do think it is kind of like some people need their body to be kind of shocked a little bit or like challenged, I'd say is a better word. And some people do well with that. But our, I'd say our population that we really help the most are women ages 40 to like 65 to 70. And why do we work with that group? Because they are in the toughest situation. They're the ones that need the help and that are a little bit more desperate of saying nothing is working anymore. And mm -hmm. why? Because they have been through a lot in their world. So maybe it's just previous stressors of being a woman, but really it's more of, you know, menopause, whether it's before, during, or after menopause, the metabolism is shifting with the hormones. So now if you are in that place, Intermittent fasting does not go hand in hand with any of that research, any of it. No, I mean, this is, but this is my personal thing. Like I haven't had anything to eat since nine 30 and I'm dying right now. Like <laughs> Three hours. Uh -huh. Three hours. <laughs> I, I I'm, see, I'm by right. the way, before we were getting on this call, I, I think I ate at 10, but I did a little workout. And I, before we were getting on this, I was like, and both of our things were empty, meaning I'm like, oh, she's not there. I bet you she's looking in the fridge to get, find some food. And I'm like, I need to make this meeting short because I got to eat a little something because I just exercised, you know? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I ate at nine, but then I've been like doing a lot of like, and I've been doing a lot of stuff that had like mental load. Like I've been mm -hmm. writing programs and doing other stuff. And, and it's like, you, you don't realize how much food you need just to do like mental stuff your your brain needs carbs it needs that fuel that needs quicker it, fuel which is the carbs mm -hmm. yes and it needs and it needs it like to be steady right we don't need like mm -hmm. and then not so like when we're going around when we're talking about intermittent fasting and keto 
the keto is going to restrict the carbohydrates. So then you're going to be like, why do I have brain fog all the time? It's like, because your brain wants the, it wants the glucose. It wants the glycogen. It wants that to, to think. Yeah. Right. And then you're like, oh, I have brain fog. Um, or if you don't eat for a while, you're like, oh, I'll just have some more caffeine or all that. Cause that doesn't Even count energy against, the, mm-hmm. it doesn't count against the intermittent fasting, but caffeine doesn't give you energy. It's a stimulant. It stimulates you. It doesn't actually give you energy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not calories. Calories are it's, energy. It's not real fuel. It's not fuel. No. And, and then, and then if you don't even drink coffee, right. And you don't eat what you release is a stress hormone to give you the perception of energy. You mm-hmm. release cortisol. Correct. And that cortisol is there to like make you get through your tasking, right? And it mm-hmm. kind of gives you that little buzzy feeling. It might make you like feel like, oh, a I'm a little get wired, a little mm-hmm. wired, which like if you're a type A person can be a little bit addictive, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then what's cortisol? Cortisol is a fat storing hormone too. Yeah. Right. So exactly. if we've got that midsection weight gain, it's because the cortisol is high. So if we can keep the blood sugar steady and actually start to use true calories and fuel, I know we don't count calories, but you need calories, calories, calories are fuel. That's yeah. energy. Yeah. So you can have actual calories to fuel your workout, to fuel your thinking, to fuel your day. You won't have to release a bunch of stress hormones or drink a bunch of coffee, which like exacerbate the stress hormones in order to get through your day. Yeah. I hope that sunk in for, for anyone listening. Cause it's, it's a lot of information and we're getting like a little clinical, but you need to understand it because this person who I talked to kept on just saying, but, but it's good. Like I should be doing it at some point, you know? And I'm like, well, how do you feel every day? Like, so pay attention to you, what's going on in your body. And literally her, her answer is. I feel like crap every day. I feel horrible. <laughs> I know. I talked to somebody this morning who intermittent fasts and does keto and she's feels terrible. Yeah. And why, she's why like we- doubling down. I'm like, why are we doubling down on something that makes us feel absolutely terrible? I don't it is, like- it's, it's definitely psychological because our society is yeah. just so hooked on whether it's, you know, the scale or how we look. And then these are solutions because they're diets and they seem attainable in a short period of time. So it's like attractive. I want to do this. I want to do it. You know, there's studies showing that it works. So let's just be clear studies, especially on intermittent fasting, but keto as well, like are mainly like, I don't know what a percentage would be. Is it 90%? Is it 95%? Something like that. It's really high. <laughs> it's really high. Mainly is on men because they don't have complicated hormone systems. Mm-hmm. So now if you are a woman, but you're also a woman that is in the age of pre-menopause or post-menopause, uh, you are going to definitely have your hormones even more fluctuating Mm-hmm. So they're even more complicated. So there's even less studies on you, right? Because yeah. it's like completely unpredictable. And if they did so. studies on you, I am going to put my money on it. That it is going to show weight gain because your cortisol is more activated when you stress your body out, when your hormones are already fluctuating and trying to figure out this complicated world of menopause. And so if they're already complicated and it's like, and then you're just saying, okay, let's shock the body. Let's not eat for this amount of time, or let's just skip carbs for most of the day. And that's my main fuel source. So now your body has to work extra hard to break down uh, energy and, and break down into fuel. So all of this stresses your body out more. So if you already have a stressful life, or if you're near menopause, you're a woman, I am going to just say, do not do any kind of diet like that. It will always backfire on you. Even if you have good results in the in the first week or two, I will put my money on it that it will start to really activate cortisol and will halt all success. And then you will definitely gain weight with it. And so I just, it's like so heavy on my heart that this is like, everyone thinks this is an answer. So please, please do. I want to everyone to be more intuitive with their body. Like, do you know what's going on? Do you know what causes you to have low energy? Do you know what causes you to have cravings all the time? You know, like I, I do you know what's making you so achy? 
So there's just so many different things to think about other than just weight. And I want everyone to start getting in tune with their body. And we do that by fueling it evenly through the day and creating lifestyle habits that feel good, that you want to stick with. Mm -hmm. And, and that's kind of the beautiful world that we teach and that our program is based on, and it's going to be how to heal the metabolism first so that you don't have to struggle with weight loss. You can lose it naturally. And that naturally you feel better in your body with less inflammation and less cravings. So it's, it's a more of a natural process. We have a question. Awesome. Um, what are your thoughts on herbal life? Just don't feel like that's uh, herbal life. I don't is feel a lot. like that's even really a diet, is it? I mean, it's like it's a lot of supplements, supplements? Mm -hmm. maybe shakes or something like that. I haven't researched it in a while. I don't um, know anything. About I, I'm going to just say that in general, from from my past experiences of researching herbal life supplements, I'm not going to knock them. I think there's some really good products out there, uh, and and so I, I like those but I don't know of it as a diet. So I'm not sure. I don't know anything about it either. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, we hear a lot of different diets out there, but we haven't really kind of gone through that too much, you know, and, and just, you know, to maybe wrap it up, like we're obviously not a diet. We are lifestyle changes. And, and the key concepts are that we, help our clients to heal their metabolism first so they can get all the benefits. The way that we do that is by really honing in on blood sugar and hormones. So stabilizing your blood sugar consistently, like Stacy said, not just up and down. Like it's, we are really thinking about all your lifestyle habits, your daily routines to stabilize that blood sugar and to reduce the cortisol. And when I say reduce the cortisol, it's to calm down the stress response in the body so that you can start to feel really good in your body and get natural fuel and, and to see the results. Yeah. Um, your, your hormones are going to follow and not just your sex hormones. Cause whenever we say hormones, people think we're talking like estrogen, progesterone, um, testosterone. testosterone. Yeah. But they, these also do follow your blood sugar too, but all your hormones follow your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. if your blood sugar goes low, then you release a hunger hormone, right? And then you, your satiety hormone gets suppressed and then your cortisol goes up. And then it's, so it's like all these different things. It's like this cascade of hormones when you're hungry happen. And when your blood sugar dips or when it's too high, like now we got to release more insulin to yeah. eat up the blood sugar. Right. And then it's going to crash. And like, Mm -hmm. So that's like, if we can keep the blood sugar steady and we can do it through carbohydrates and proteins and mm -hmm. eating on a regular interval, it's just like, that's where your body gets happier. <laughs> it's so it much happier. Get happier. So, okay. I think that's enough science yeah, there for all eat. of you. Uh -huh. We got to eat. <laughs> yes, we do. And we're proud of it. You know, and, and go yeah, honestly, when, when your metabolism is revved up, you need more food. So it's, um, it's something that, uh, people always think they're like, when I lose this weight, I'm going to have to like decrease the amount of food. I'm like, no, that's not how it works at all. So, um, which is the opposite dieting, right? When you diet for a while, you need less and less in order to see any results at all. And you're damaging your metabolism worse and worse through that process. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yes, and then we, uh, we have to yeah. eat with our healthy metabolisms. Uh -huh. Yeah. Cause then you go into low energy availability and then you become catabolic and you eat up your muscle tissue. I mean, we could talk about this all day, but I'd rather just go have a snack. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for joining. Okay. If you have any questions at all, take care. Okay. everyone. Bye guys.